podcast Slip Slip Knit, a podcast about knitting. I hope you enjoy. This is going to be a podcast about my knitting. I watch way too many knitting podcasts and it seems like so much fun to record. So I said to myself, I also want to do that. And first I said, yeah, well, not now because your projects are not interesting enough and the yarn you're buying are not fancy enough. And well, I had tons of reasons, but then I was, nah, just do it. Otherwise it would never happen. Um, now is as good as ever. So here I am. And since this is the first episode, I intend to introduce myself a little. I, my name is Ilva, as I said. I currently live in the US, but I am originally from Sweden. And I lived here for um, a little bit over one and a half years. So I came in September, one and a half year ago, to the US. I learned how to knit when I moved to the US, since I had a little bit more time on my hands. And I also joined a crafting group where some of them the members were knitters and they were happy to show me what I when I had questions after watching the YouTube video where I actually learned. This is this knitting podcast. I will talk about what I'm knitting on currently and what I'm uh, thinking about regarding knitting. It's also to keep a sign kind of a knitting diary for myself and to learn a new medium, how to do a podcast and work technically and yeah, to do something outside my comfort zone. I guess finished objects. Since this is my first podcast, I can't really say since last time I've been knitting on. Anyway, intend to show you a project that I've been working on and a project that I finished maybe one or two weeks ago because I like it. Mm. It's a hat. Um, it looks like this. Ooh. Uh, it's called Foliage. Uh, it's a free pattern on Ravelry and it has this lace cable leaf motif. I think it's really pretty. Oh, sorry. Uh, here you go. This is how it looks. Um, it may, might seem complicated with the lace and the cables, but it's really clearly written and it's a great way to start the new techniques. It's actually one of the first things I knitted since I learned. But then I didn't really understand this whole thing with yarn weight, so I used a maybe light fingering or fingering really pretty soft merino yarn and then I blocked it around the plate but without making sure to not block the ribbing. So that version is really flimsy. It's beautiful yarn and I really like the pattern, but that version, not so much. The ribbing is unstretchy, it's completely outstretched out, and yeah. But, so now I took my time to make a new one. The yarn is sport weight, and it's Knit Picks Wool of Anderns. It's a nice pattern. The pattern is both written and charted, so it's a great way to not only try out lace and cables, but it's also to try uh, charted instructions if you haven't tried that before. Works in progress. have a hoe that is half a finished object. It's a sock. It's Devil Snare, also free pattern on Ravelry. It has this nice Devil Snare inspired motif on the front. Uh, I knit it in Knit Picks, Stroll, Glimmering, the Potions colorway. I thought it was a proper eight. It's a little bit glittery. If you can see, oh, the yarn here, if it's, it's a little bit glittery. Ooh. Sparkly. He a sparkly plant. And here is the second sock. How far I am on this one. And this is uh, Chiogo's size US size one 2.25 millimeters cables. And I usually knit with only with Chiogo, sure, but they're wooden needles. I love them. I have both the interchangeable set and the double point needle set. But I thought I wanted to learn how to do magic loop so that I can learn how to do two at a time socks. Now I am working on getting confident with magic loop. And it's slow. I'm slow. It's, I know a lot of people often say it's faster with magic loop, but I think it's just faster with what you're used to. But I want to be able to use, do both, so I do. And this pair of socks will go into the two Harry Potter cows going on right now. Cows as in knit-alongs. 
pin feathers and pearls and the knitting broomstick ending by the end of this month, April. I'm putting them in there since the pattern is Harry Potter inspired and the colorway is actually kind of Harry Potter inspired too, even though I didn't think that was the intention. With nitpicks, because uh, I don't think they have that kind of intentions. But me knitting with so much nitpicks yarn was one of the reasons I was hesitant towards starting to podcast, because I thought I was not cool enough with all the cool in the dyer yarn that is out there. I'm I'm working on it. When I started to knit, um, knit picks was a really good choice because it was not too expensive and when you start not all your products are turning out that nice so you don't want to spend too much money on it. And the yarn is not bad. If you I mean if you buy the wool yarn you would get good wool yarn. But my second work in progress it's a shawl and it's also in a knit picks yarn. It's their gloss fingering which is silk wool blend. This is a pattern I saw at the podcast stitched in Sweden where Maria is making one. Uh, and uh, it's also free on Ravelry, I think it's called Quote. And it has this drop stitches. So you make a rib and then you drop the stitches. And when I knit this, I realize that it's not, stitches don't drop as easily as you think they should do when you don't want them to, when you don't want to drop them. I blocked this first part of the shawl that came out. It's asymmetric, so, and it's so nice. I want to move in with this shawl. Oh, I'm already living with this shawl. <laughs> I'm looking forward to finishing it, but when it's finished, it's gonna be hot. It's already been like 25 centigrades plus the last few days, and I don't think it will get that much cooler. So either I just have to hang out in areas with lots and lots of air condition, or I just have to wait till fall before I use it. I shouldn't complain because the weather is too good. My third and last work in progress is this cardigan. It's called Siri. The pattern is called Siri. It's a Swedish design by Linnea Erman. Uh, and uh, I love it. It's um, it's quite warm though. So when I, I started it in October and hoped it would be finished before the winter has ended. I, I made this watch, but still the it turned out too big when I knitted this um, patterned area here. Out and I've knitted like this batch and then I had to rip it all out because it was too big and I wouldn't wear it when it was just that big. So, but I have a little bit on the sleeves left and then I will have to re-knit the neckband because it's a little bit... I picked up too many stitches so it's standing right up instead of laying down. So I blocked it, test blocked it yesterday, so it's a little bit damp, not much, on the in the armpits. But I, I am also looking forward to wearing this and it's going to be too warm for very, very many more months. So I'm a little bit sad for that, but so excited to be finished eventually. Hmm. I don't really have any exciting stash acquisitions this week, but I have, I bought those uh, needles. It's a set of double point needles from Shiogu. Uh, the size 5, 3.75 millimeters, so that I can knit the sleeves on my Siri cardigan. So, not too exciting, but... <laughs> Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival is coming up and I'm going there with some friends. So, I hope to do a lot of yarn buying there. I've made a list of potential future projects I have it all planned out. If I find yarn for that will be suitable for any of them, I will buy it there. Um, what I will cast on next is um, the water lily from Pom Pom Quarterly, like last spring or something. I'm so, I'm so behind. <laughs> As you can see, it has lace over the shoulders and then it's a short sleeve top stockinette body. I think that would be nice. I found yarn from PhD Yarns that I found out about from the 10,000 stitches podcast. I found a colorway that I like on an appropriate base, so I, but I only had one left, so I sent them an email and they said they would die up some more this week and then get back to me. So, but since my cardigan is not finished yet, I guess no rush. Um, so that will be next on my needles. I've also been considering casting on a granny square blanket. Uh, I just have to learn how to crochet first, but I tried it out and it seemed yeah, Granny's course. I should probably be able to make it. 
Um, I, I know a lot of people do the cozy memories blanket to get rid of their sock yarn scraps. The product is just not speaking to me. Well, we had a granny square blanket when I was a kid that my grandmother did together with her sisters when she was growing up. Maybe that's why I feel more like doing a granny square blanket. So some people say it's much easier to crochet than to knit. I don't know. I'm like, I'm, I never know where to stick the hook in. I guess I learned. Uh, thank you for joining me. I hope to see you soon again. Take care and happy knitting. Bye!